Okay guys, we are back here today to do another tutorial session. Um, today we're going to be making a sample for a commercial client that we have. Uh, we're going to be using our wood look technique and some custom colors that the, the customer is looking for. Uh, I'm going to talk you through, I'm going to do this a certain way, I'm going to talk you through what a few of your options would be to do them slightly different with the same technique than what we're actually doing. So I'm going to start with my main color which is our metallic copper. And with this, you can either put some really big, heavy spots, or you can make these lines small and thin. It kind of depends on if you want your, all of your color to stay kind of consistent from one side of the piece to the other, or if you want it to really shift, like you want this area to be really copper and then the next area to be another color. Uh, it kind of just depends on what you're gunning for. This one, we're going to make our areas just a little bit more bold with individual colors. So we're putting them in pretty heavy. Now for this particular technique, I like to use about three and a half ounces of epoxy per square foot. You can go up to about four, but I really don't recommend going any heavier than that. Because if you get more epoxy than that on the board, it, the, the more epoxy you pile up, the further it's going to walk as it starts to level out. So you will get more distortion the thicker you put this on. It'll travel and your lines won't be as crisp and as clean as they would be if you didn't put it on quite so heavy. So our second color is our walnut liquid pigment. It's just a very dark brown. And by switching from metallic pigments to liquid pigments, it really gives us a, a lot of effect without having to do a whole lot of work on our part uh, because the, the different pigments, they fight each other every step of the way. So from you know just putting them in and mixing them together, they're gonna kind of twist and turn around each other. But when we hit it with the isopropyl alcohol, you get some really cool effects just by using different types of pigment, not just different colors. So then this one here is also a liquid pigment. This is our dark taupe that we have. We're just getting some different shades going in this piece. Notice I'm not drawing or I'm not trying to draw perfectly straight lines as I'm pouring this out. I'm definitely pouring it in a linear fashion, but I'm not necessarily trying to get it perfectly straight. Not what we're gunning for here. Okay, now we have some forest green. This is a metallic color. We have less of the green than we have the other colors because this is kind of an accent color. I still want it to be bold and prominent. There's just not as much volume of it. as there is the other colors. Okay. And then last but not least, we have a little bit of our black liquid pigment. Definitely with black, you want to go quite a bit more sparing with your color. It goes a long way. It'll black out pretty much everything it touches. Black is one of those very important colors to incorporate because it does create some really realistic, nice effects. But if you put too much in, if you're not careful, you'll just end up with a black piece. So, all right. So now once we've got our color on the board, we're gonna take our gloved hand, we're gonna spread this out first, and then I'm gonna show you how to kind of create your wood grain. I'm just going to start at the furthest point away from me. And all I'm trying to do is spread the epoxy evenly over the entire surface and get it rolling over that edge. And work my way towards myself. 
just want to make sure I get everything covered. So three ounces per square foot is plenty of epoxy to get a nice, heavy, even coat onto a surface. So doing this one at three and a half ounces per square foot when you're mixing your color gives you a little bit extra. So if you feel like you don't want to use all of one of your colors that you made, you have, you have enough of your other colors to make up for that. Like I said, you don't want to be putting five or six ounces per square foot of epoxy on one of these because you're going to lose a lot of your, your distinction of your lines if you have too much epoxy on there because it's just going to travel too far. So now we want to address our edges, make sure we have epoxy flowing real nice and evenly over top of all of our edges. Okay, so now that we have everything coated with epoxy, we're now going to take our same hand, but instead of holding our hand flat, we're going to use our fingertips. And we're not drawing straight lines, and we're going to vary the the uh, distance between our fingers you know we're going to let our hand rotate a little bit and you will see at the end of this thing just how much those different types of pigment help us because they will fight each other and they won't blend and kind of mute themselves out. Like if we just used all metallic or if we just use all the solid color pigments, they just kind of blend together and meld together. And they really just don't create near as pretty and intricate of a piece. Okay. So now you just want to make sure you don't have any dry spots, make sure there's a little dry spot right there. Make sure you don't have anything like any lines. Maybe you retch out there to fix something and now you've got a line going across the epoxy. You just wanna make sure you don't have anything like that. I'm gonna smooth out my edges again. See how this area right here is, is a lot of my black kind of pulled up. I don't really care for that. So I'm just gonna run my fingers through it one more time just to try to make that look a little bit more natural. Okay. I'm gonna wipe my hand off. And then this piece comes together pretty quickly with this technique. So now we can move directly into our isopropyl alcohol. This is 91% isopropyl alcohol. You always wanna just barely hit your trigger. So I get small, and large droplets. So I like to come and spray my spray in the direction that the flow of my piece is going. So now I'm gonna let Chris, our cameraman, just walk around and show you how the different pigments we had our walnut, which is a very dark brown liquid pigment, our dark taupe, which is a much more of a beige tone. Um, that's also a liquid pigment. We had metallic copper, metallic uh, forest green, and then we also had a little bit of our black liquid pigment. So as he's walking around, you're gonna see, you can see every single color is distinctly separated from the other, other colors. Now, if we had taken all metallic powders in the same color tones, they really just mute themselves out. So you need to change it up. And that's about all there is to this technique. Obviously, you need to babysit your faces, watch your drips, make sure you don't get any points of tension. Um, but essentially, this piece would be done other than just babysitting and making sure that everything finishes out um, in the proper manner. Now, this one, we got a few air bubbles in there. So if you got some air bubbles and you want to torch it, make sure if you're going to use a torch that you take your torch in the direction 
that your grain is, whether it's a piece uh, like a marble or the wood tone like this, because if you get late in the process and you torch this thing late, it can, what we call wrinkle the epoxy, and you'll just have these, they're clear, but you'll see it in the, the depth of the epoxy. So if I took the torch this away and it was getting a little bit late in the process, you wouldn't see it at first, but when it cured, you'd see every single stripe that I made with that torch. So just make sure you always go with your grain. Right here, I don't know if this will show up on camera, but we have a very large spot of uh, where a big drop of the isopropyl hit, and it's kind of creating this big round spot here. So if that happens, you can touch around the perimeter of where that's going and it will stop it. Now, if, let's just say you're like, oh my gosh, I hate, I hate where I just had to touch that. You could take a stick back through it to get it going back in that same kind of linear motion that we already had. I'm not moving a lot of epoxy, so I'm not really changing the way it's gonna look. Then I can just come back here and just barely Hit that spot and it'll blend right in and you'll never know that we did anything to it. I need just a little bit more. There we go. So now we just sit here and wait. Babysit. But if you if you really want your colors to pop, the biggest lesson that you can learn from this uh, particular video is you always want to use different types of pigment. We have our solid colors, our liquids, we have our metallics, you can also use spray paint, uh, you can use ink dyes. There's a lot of different mediums that you can use as far as pigments go uh, that will help uh, give you that distinction between your colors so they don't just blend together and mute out. Well, this is going to be awesome. I think the customer is going to be super ecstatic with this. So now this would just let this cure make sure that we take care of any drips and we would sand it and apply our top coat and it's ready to deliver so that's it that's all there is to it we'll see you on the next one